kitchens contain many useful tools, cooking utensils and products. The following gadgets are trying to serve a stronger purpose, but might simply be unique. Grocery lists are common in households. I know it is in mine. Mm -hmm. The Smart Shopper is a voice-activated electronic shopping list that promises to organize your life. This magnetic gadget is placed on the fridge. Whenever you think of an item you need to purchase, press record and say whatever it is you want. Through voice recognition, the Smart Shopper can organize your items into categories like food, beauty supplies, or beverages. And when you're ready to shop, simply press print and the device will print out by category your shopping list. This next kitchen gadget looks like it belongs in a child's toy kitchen, but actually functions as a regular phone. The toaster phone comes with a base and a cordless unit. When a call is coming in, the toast pops right out of the base and resembles the moves of an actual toaster. But we gotta warn you, this phone is not edible. But if you are hungry for information, then check out this next story. Get ready as Carolyn takes us into the world of airborne technology. Joining Carolyn earlier in our Gadget Girls studio was Marnie McVicker from Arion Labs. Voted one of the top innovative companies to watch out for, they share one of their newest inventions, the Arion Scout. Check this out. If you're a fan of action movies like James Bond and Mission Impossible, then you're going to love the device we have for you today. It's called the Arian Scout. Marnie McVicker is here from Arian Labs to tell us all about how this device can fly up into the air and take digital photos as well as real-time video. All right, Marnie, tell us all about how this thing works. It's simple. It's a camera strapped to a, an unmanned aerial vehicle. Sounds simple. It is. It has four moving parts. These motors are controlled independently, allows you to take off, allows you to fly, allows you to come back. It also hovers, which is very important in taking pictures. Right. So you can get into position, grab the picture you want, and go. And so the person who's operating this, are they controlling both the device and taking pictures at the same time? Absolutely. It's nice and simple through this touch screen interface. You see over here you have the maps. It's a point and click. You press where you want the aerial vehicle to go. It flies there. You point the camera where you want. It'll take video the whole time it's flying. And if you want to still, you simply push on the camera, it grabs a picture. When you're back on the ground, you can download it from the flyer to the tablet and review the data here. So, Marnie, can you tell us about some of the technical specifications of this device? I mean, how high can it fly? How far can it go? Right now, we fly it to about 400 feet. Um, it can go up probably to close to 200 meters, although with a small camera and a simple field of view, you want to stay probably around the 100 meter mark, maybe right. a little bit less. It flies for 20 minutes. It flies in all weather conditions, so if it's rainy, no problem. If it's cold, we're good, and if it's warm, we're good. So it's limited to the 20 minute flight. It is limited and that's a technology limitation on the, on the batteries. Now how weather resistant is the camera part because, let me just lift this up here, it's, it's underneath this capsule. Yep. Um, Again, so it's water resistant so you can fly it in the rain, uh, snow, um, it's actually water repellent so if you land it in a puddle it would still be okay. Alright, that's pretty good to know. About the mechanical aspects here, I noticed that we have four rotors. Um, a typical helicopter has one main rotor on the top and then a tail rotor to control various torque right. balances. How have you designed these rotors such that A, torque can be controlled and, and balanced, but B, that you can have those um, various degrees of freedom for rotation and displacement? Right, so inside this unit, there's a lot of horsepower. There's actually right. a microprocessor in there. There's a lot of things like gyros and stabilizers and all the good things that you need to know where you are, magnet, uh, magnetometers and everything. So each of the motors is controlled independently. Mm -hmm. So the, the pitch of the motor determines if you're going to go forwards or backwards or up or down or if you're just going to hover. So there's right. a lot of math going on inside there to be able to just to fly and then to battle the wind as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about some of the uh, functions and components to the tablet here. So everything is through touch screen. Again, so the amount of time it takes to train somebody with a remote control system is about three days. With this, it's say an hour. Oh wow, you're that's slow. really fast. If you're slow, maybe two hours. <laughs> There's three parts of this. is the area that you need to fly so that you can go in here, point where you want it to go, or pre-program it and it'll fly on its own. You get to see the video here, so when you're happy with the picture that you want, or if you just want video, you let it go. If you want it, you push the button. We also have a lot of indicators and warnings because it's very important. So if the battery's running low, it'll give you an indication and it'll come back to its home position. Before it runs out of battery. Before it runs out of battery and falls from the sky. Yeah. If it's too windy, it does the same thing. You can imagine this only weighs a couple of pounds or 1.2 kilograms, so wind is our enemy. Yeah. <laughs> so we can, we can handle up to about 45 kilometer an hour winds, which is very good Still for our really weight. Good, it yeah. is. So it gives you all the warnings here. So if communication is lost, if the battery's low, if it's too windy or if there's a failure, it lets you know. It will attempt to come home 
it loses its GPS, it lands where it is, but you can go find it. So what types of um, things can we expect from the Arian Scout in the future? So we're looking at thermal, because a lot of the military and police need that, as well as the building inspector, so they can see for heat right. loss. And then there, there's a near IR camera, which will follow shortly thereafter for low light applications. Again, that'll be primarily for police, military, law enforcement type folks, um, whereas the thermal has a much broader application. We're also looking at collision avoidance, which means not hitting other flying things, which is much <laughs> more difficult than not hitting a building or a tree. And a lot of safety features are being added in as well, in addition to longer flight time. Well, thanks for coming in, Marnie. It looks like it would be a lot of fun to operate. And thanks for sharing all your information on the latest technologies in aerial surveillance. You're welcome. A 